There are three things you need to know if you want to build a successful brand using social media. First, you need to understand the golden circle. Not knowing what this is or just flat out ignoring it is one of the biggest mistakes you can make. I'll explain why in just a second. But before that, you also need to understand confirmation bias. Confirmation bias may sound super complicated because it's a psychological term, but basically it just comes down to showing your potential customers that you share and support the same beliefs and opinions as them, which is going to earn you a ton of trust and loyalty very quickly. And this is important because in today's day and age, trust and loyalty literally lead to purchases. It's what really push leads down your sales funnel and help you build a stronger brand online. Finally, you need to create content that reflects everything we just talked about. So we're going to get into all of that today, but real quick before we do, I'm Brandy with Life Marketing, the digital marketing agency that helps small businesses grow. All right. So in order to talk about how to build a brand that makes millions, we first have to talk about what your brand is, specifically the difference between your brand and branding. Your brand is not your logo, your font, your color palette, any of that. Your brand is how others perceive your business what you stand for, what you believe in or support. Your branding is your logo, color palette, tagline, and all of that. The problem with most social media marketing plans and strategies out there today is that they're usually full of useless advice and superficial information telling you things like, the key to success is to post more, post as much as you can, as often as you can. But why would you post more if what you're currently posting isn't working? This is why the first step in my guide to build a multi-million dollar brand is to figure out your golden circle. If you aren't familiar with it, this is the golden circle. We can see it's broken down into three sections being why, how, and what. This is a breakdown of what your product or service is, how you do what you do, and why you do it. The mistake most companies make is they start from what and work their way into why. And they do that because that's how most communication in general is done. That would be like saying something such as, we sell cutting edge smartphones using the latest technology. We're able to do this because our engineers work day in and day out to make sure we always stay up to date on the newest advancements. So if you want the latest and greatest, buy our phones. That's working from what to why. The greatest and most successful companies, however, work from the inside out. They start with why and then branch out into what. That would be something like, we believe in challenging the status quo and thinking differently by making our products cutting edge, beautifully designed, and yet simple to use. So let me introduce you to the new iPhone. So we'll talk more in a minute about how to create your content using the golden circle, but for now it's important to start reframing the way that you think about and deliver your messaging. The second thing we said was important to understand was confirmation bias. Let me ask you a question. What type of people do you like the most? Who do you feel the strongest connection towards? Would you say it's people that like and believe the same things as you do or people that don't like or believe in anything that you do? Odds are pretty good that you went with option A. This is because we as humans tend to gravitate towards people that like the same things that we do. We actively seek out and engage with others who share our same views and beliefs and values and essentially who confirm our identities and how we view ourselves in the world. The flip side of that is when we're presented with new information or we hear information that kind of goes against our beliefs or values, oftentimes we immediately subconsciously just write that information off as false or push that person or brand away. So if your goal is to build a successful brand on social media, then you need to do your research understand your target audience, do some social listening, join the groups that they're in, follow the industry leaders that you're competing with, and figure out what your current and desired audience believes in and what they want to see. Really put yourself into your customer's shoes so that you can create your content in a way that makes them feel heard and acknowledged and understood. This will create a lot of trust with your customers and make them feel like you see and understand them because customers don't buy when they understand, they buy when they feel understood. Let me share a personal example that puts this into play. I've spent years trying to find a deodorant I liked, one that didn't have all the bad, toxic, cancer-causing ingredients, and one that still actually worked because most of the natural deodorants out there have a reputation for not working. You know what I mean? Well, I came across this ad for a small business where the founder created her company for those exact reasons. She said she was tired of her choices being between a deodorant that had all these terrible toxins in it or a deodorant that didn't work. Her values and likes and dislikes and what she wanted were the same as mine. I felt understood. Her reasons for creating the company resonated with me and I've been a customer of hers ever since. The company is Curie, by the way, in case you needed to know. Not sponsored, but I mean, like we could work something out. I don't know, you know.
All right, so we have the golden circle and confirmation bias. Now, how do we put it all into play? I'll break it down for you in four steps. Step one, work from the inside out. We're back at the golden circle. Did you think about it? Define your why? If you haven't yet, you'll want to define your why before you do anything else. The reason this is important is because the shift we've seen in recent years that I believe will continue to be the standard moving forward is that people don't buy your product, they buy why you do it. Because they don't buy when they understand, they buy when they what? Feel understood, very good. This is why UGC or user generated content does so well. This is why inspirational founder stories do so well, like in the deodorant example. People are over being sold to, they just want to be understood and connected with. And this is why the golden circle works. So step one is to define your why and work from there to fill out the how and what in your golden circle. Step two is to choose your platform or platforms. I'm a firm believer that not every business has to be on every social platform. For example, if you mainly focus on B2B or if you sell software or really anything that's traditionally considered to be more corporate, Google, Facebook, and LinkedIn are probably gonna be your main focus. Behind that would probably be YouTube slash YouTube Shorts because a lot of YouTube videos show up in Google search results and YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world behind Google. Then maybe a blog and then maybe way down the line is like Pinterest, Snapchat, and TikTok. Unless you're unbelievably good on camera and have a knack for edutainment, those top three will probably get you better results than the rest of them combined. On the other hand, if you sell clothing or home goods like candles and other e-commerce products, then TikTok and Instagram will probably be your focus followed by YouTube content. If you have a more universally needed business, like if you're an electrician, work in HVAC, insurance, etc., then honestly, I'd still say Google, Google Ads, Facebook and Facebook ads are still king here. So it's up to you to decide where you wanna invest that time and money and you do that by figuring out who your target audience is and where they are online. Step three is to master the hook. This looks different depending on what type of content you focus on, but it is one of the most important factors. For long form videos, this is the title, thumbnail, and first three seconds. For short videos, this is the first second. For Facebook ads, this is the headline and the creative. Regardless, nobody is gonna consume the rest of your content if they aren't hooked by the start of it. So how do you write a good hook? It's easy with this formula, benefit, time frame, and objection. Here's how that formula looks in a few real examples. Get your ideal body in 30 days without a gym membership. Become a better writer in two weeks with this simple trick. How to grow your business in one month without spending money on ads. Lead with a benefit your customers will get, follow that with a time frame they can expect to get it in, and quickly tackle any objections they may have like price or difficulty. I'm telling you that formula for hooks works every time. All right, moving on to step four. Now that you have your why, you know where your audience is and you know how to hook them, let's talk about your strategy for distribution. This is knowing where to post and when. You picked the platforms you wanna be on in step two. Now you need to figure out when is the optimal time to post on those platforms and if there's any specificities with posting on certain parts of that platform. Most platforms will give you the information in your analytics dashboard. I know for example, for Instagram, it shows you when your followers are most active. So take that data and post right at the beginning of when they're active so that you set the stage for the most possible engagement. And do some testing on your own to see when it's best to post on stories versus in the feed, etc. Again, not all platforms are built equally. So let's say you take this year to really focus on short form vertical content. Your platforms of choice are TikTok, YouTube Shorts, and Instagram slash Facebook Reels. All of those platforms and your audience on each may look totally different. On Instagram, your best time could be 9 a.m. on Tuesday, but on TikTok, it could be noon on Thursday. So plan accordingly. So by now you've defined your golden circle, your purpose, you understand the cognitive biases that go into creating effective content, and you know how to put it into practice and where to put it into practice. You have one last thing to do. Turn all of this into an effective sales funnel. Sales funnels can be intimidating because there are so many different types and definitions of what they are, but we have a fail safe sales funnel that any business can use to increase their revenue and scale. And if you wanna know what it is and how to use it, then be sure to watch this video right here.